Bam! Mr. Teru, in this lesson, we are going to learn a new way of integrating. It's called integration by parts. In this lesson, we are going to, uh, well, we're going to learn when this new technique is going to be most useful to us. You'll see uh, we have a little derivation on the board uh, that uh, you can, you know, well, I'll help you understand where this rule comes from. And then if you're taking, ooh, excuse me, taking a test and you forget this rule, hopefully you don't. Uh, but you can go through the, so the process to rebuild it on your own. We will be looking at suggestions of what to let u and dv e be equal to in our integrand. And to further that uh, aid, I'm going to introduce you to an acronym that I've heard said, uh, spoken a number of ways on the internet, so I'm not really sure the best way to say it. I've heard light, I've heard light, and I'm going to accent the last e at the end to make sure that we remember that part of the acronym, the Laite rule, and I'll give you a footnote to the professor in the description of this video, uh, who apparently, from what I read, uh, came up with this acronym to help his students with these type of problems. And how many examples are we going to do in this video? Lesson, we are going to do five indefinite integral uh, examples, or indefinite integration examples. We'll do another lesson for um, doing definite integration and another lesson when we need to incorporate some u substitution as well to finish the problems up. But all five of these uh, will be indefinite integration and will not require that u substitution. So integration by parts. If u and v are functions of x and have continuous derivatives, then the indefinite integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the indefinite integral of v du. Now, Please note, it says if u and v are functions of x, okay? So you're not going to see u's and v's in your problem. That's going to be up to you to say, okay, what factors of this integrand am I going to set u equal to? And the remainder will be uh, dv. Okay, so where does this rule come from? Well, the derivative of f of x times g of x, the product, the derivative rule for products, is equal to the first factor times the derivative of the second plus the second factor times the derivative of the first. Okay, so here's the product rule for finding uh, derivatives. If we integrate both sides, we have f of x times g of x is equal to the indefinite integral of f of x, g prime of x plus g of x uh, times f prime of x again. And of course, we're going to be integrating with respect to x because these are functions uh, in terms of x. Okay, so now we have, we're integrating two separate terms. So we're going to write a separate integral for each of those terms. And if we look at this line and if we look at where we're trying to go, this is a technique for integration. We're trying to integrate something. So you'll see we have an integral here, some kind of product to, of two functions, and then minus another integral. So we're going to move things around here. I'm going to subtract both sides by the, well, I'll move my eraser as well. Subtract both sides by the indefinite integral of f. Uh, g prime and subtract f uh, g over to the other side and we have negative uh, the, the negative indefinite integral of f of x g prime of x dx and again moving this term over with subtraction minus f of x gx uh, plus the indefinite integral of g of x times f prime of x dx. This rule doesn't have a negative in front, so we're going to take this entire equation and multiply through it by negative 1, canceling that negative sign out and canceling this negative sign out, and negative times positive is negative. Now, if we let u equal f of x, then du is going to be f of x dx, and if we let v equals g of x, then dv is going to be g prime of x dx. You know, if you have to uh, if, you know, if you have to walk through the chain rule, of course, to finish that up. So f of x, we're going to let that equal u, and then g prime of x dx is going to be dv, is equal to, well, this is what we set u and v equal to, so uv minus the de indefinite integral of v uh, du. Now, just so you can see what I'm saying if you need to take notes. Since you can derive the integration by parts rule from the product rule for derivatives, you can see that, I hope that you can, that integrating by parts is useful for integrands involving products uh, of algebraic expressions, and it'll also be um, helpful when we have transcendental functions like uh, your natural exponential function e to the x. Okay, so let's get on to those five examples. Oh, 
no, we're not ready for the examples yet. We need the suggestions from how to, uh, how to set up U and DV and that liatat rule. Oh, no, no, I'm going to say it. Liate rule. <laughs> Suggestions for determining U and DV when setting up integration by parts. Try allowing DV to equal the most complicated portion of your integrand that fits a basic integration rule. And you might have to play around with it a little bit just to make it match, of course, we understand integration by now. Uh, or try allowing U to equal um, the factor of the integrand whose derivative is simpler than U. So you wouldn't want, if you had a factor which was, say, uh, e to the 2x, you wouldn't want to allow that to be u because the derivative of e to the 2x is going to be 2 times e to the 2x. That's not simpler, okay? So <clears throat> dv, when you're setting up your little equations on the side to get this integration by uh, parts, uh, the process going, dv will always include the dx because uh, you're going to have to integrate that part, that, that uh, equation to find out what v is going to be equal to, and thus it makes sense to have the dx go along with it. Once you choose dv, the remaining factor or factors are going to be u, or vice versa. If you choose u, the rest is going to be uh, dv. Now, <clears throat> again, and I'm going to be highlighting this throughout all, I think, five examples I said I was going to do in this uh, particular vit lesson. Uh, may use, you may use the, I think I said liate, but Liate rule, the acronym, Liate, uh, to help choose your U. And you go down uh, this acronym with L for logarithm, so like the natural log of uh, X or uh, common log of X or whatever. Inverse trig functions, if you have a factor which is, inver is, which is an inverse trigonometric function, like uh, the inverse sine of X, then that would be a good place to start uh, trying to figure out what would be the best you know, factor to allow it to be equal to U. Uh, then, do you have any algebraic uh, parts or factors to your integrand, like x to the 13th power or x to the n? And then trigonometric parts, like sine of the x uh, or cosine uh, of x. And then finally, any exponential parts, just as an example, like 4 to the uh, x. So you, do, you go down this acronym in this sequence, and there are other, act actually there's other uh, variations to this, other acronyms that can help you uh, figure out what factor of your integrand is going to be best to set equal to uh, u, but I like this one, uh, and plus it's kind of fun to say liate as I go through this entire lesson. So let's get on to our first two examples. No, 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 no. And for our first example, we have the uh, indefinite integral of 4x times e to the 5x squared dx, and we see that we do have a product going on here with an algebraic portion and a natural exponential function. Uh, so it seems like this would be a good fit for uh, our new technique of integration by parts. Oh, okay. Well, before we start running down the Lyotte rule here, uh, didn't we just go through like seven chapters of our book? Uh, well, at least my book I'm teaching out of for at my school. Uh, not... Uh, knowing this technique. I mean, we did some problems with something called U substitution, right? So, if I look at this exponent of uh, my base E, my natural exponential function, if I let U equal 5x squared, then du is going to be equal to, bringing this down, 10x dx. Well, uh, outside of my natural exponential function, I do have a 4x, and I have an x dx, and I have an x dx here that I'm starting to see show up uh, with just doing, you know, an old technique of simple u substitution. And if I take this 10 and I divide it over to both sides, and then, uh, now I can do a couple of things here. Uh, you know, I could move this 4 out uh, in front of... Uh, the uh, in integral symbol there, or I can take this and multiply both sides by 4 and get 4 over 10 du is equal to 4x dx. So actually this problem doesn't need to be done with integration uh, by parts. I can just do a simple u substitution and we get the indefinite integral of 4x dx. 4x dx is going to be, I'm going to put that 2 fifths out front, just of course reducing that. Uh, 
du to the right of the integral. And we have e, the 5x squared was our u, so we have the indefinite integral, 2 fifths times the indefinite integral of e to the u du. And of course the, you know, the integral of e to the u is just e to the u, uh, you know, plus c if you're doing indefinite integration. So we end up with the final answer of 2 fifths times e to the u plus c. But of course, uh, let's put back in what the original expression was that we've let u equal to, which was uh, to the uh, u, u was 5x squared. Okay, so, you know, every problem that we do from now on is not going to be integration by parts. Now, clearly, it will be for this section of homework, for this section of your book, and for this video, because that's what we're trying to teach you for the first time. But don't forget all about the old, all of the old techniques that you already knew. So that's our first example done, and it wasn't even integration by parts. Now, for our second example that I do believe will require integration by parts, we have the indefinite integral of, uh, did I remember the plus c on that one? Yes, I did. Sorry. Uh, we have the indefinite integral of 4x e to the, uh, 4x times e to the 5x power uh, plus dx. And if I tried the same thing here, I mean, it looks very similar to the previous question. So if I let u equal 5x and then du, well, the the integral of, or excuse me, the integral, the derivative of 5x is just going to be 5. So if u is 5x, then du is going to be 5 dx. So I have a substitution to get this out, but we've got 4 dx. Well, I can move the 4 over and I can divide both sides by 5, but I have an, an extra x uh, factor of x in this integrand that I'm not going to be able to deal with with just using a basic u substitution. So now here we do have a situation where we uh, need to attack it with integration by parts. And so the u, uh, as I look at this integrand and I'm trying to identify what's going to be u and dv, well again, the u is going to be such that when I take the derivative of it, I get a simpler um, expression and, well, I guess you could say another function, but a simpler expression and dv is going to be the most complicated portion of your integrand that you can integrate with uh, a basic rule. And again, with our acronym LATTE, we have, uh, do we have a logarithm? Nope, there's no logs in there. Do we have inverse trig functions? Nope, we don't have any of those either. Do we have an algebraic factor, an algebraic part? Yes, I do. I have one right there, which is 4x. So let's see here. Now that was, this is all, this, this um, acronym is to help us figure out a good, a good thing to, uh, a good substitution or a good part of a factor, excuse me, to let u equal. So u, let's try this, u is equal to 4x, and that means that du is going to be 4dx, okay? And that means uh, once we figure out what factor or what part of this integram we want to be u, the rest of it has to be dv. So dv is going to be equal to uh, e to the 5x, dx, and as I look at my uh, process that I'm going to go here through here, my rule uh, for integrating by parts, I see I need a u, uh, I've identified what dv is going to be equal to, but I need a u, a v, and a du. Well, I've got my u, I've got my du, I've got my dv that I've simply identified from the original problem, but I need a v, which means that I need to integrate this thing. So we're going to integrate both sides of this equation, and that's going to give us v is equal to the indefinite integral of e to the 5x dx. Okay, uh, you could do this with u substitution, but at this point in your calculus class, I'm sure you're starting to get used to uh, setting up the chain rule and seeing that pattern and creating that pattern in your integrands to allow you to integrate. So uh, our u, if you will, is 5x, and the derivative of that is going to be 5. So I need to do the chain rule. I need a 5 here. And if I introduce a multiplication of 5 to create that chain rule, then I need to introduce, of course, something to cancel that out. So we're going to put a 1 fifth out front. And thus v is going to be equal to 1 fifth, remembering that the uh, 
integral of e to the u is just simply e to the u, we're going to have v is equal to uh, one-fifth e uh, to the, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> yeah, one-fifth e to the 5x. Now, you can put the plus c in here now, but uh, that's going to maybe complicate your work and get you a little bit confused as you go through this process. We're going to put the plus c back in uh, when we're done uh, with our final answer, uh, done finishing this integration, uh, this indefinite integration process. So now that we've got our u, you know, we've got all our little formulas, u, du, or we've got an answer for v, uh, let me step off and make sure that these come out to be as neat as notes as possible, uh, give you a chance to try and finish this problem on your own, simply setting up this formula uh, and reveal the answers to this integration by parts process uh, one step at a time. So I hope you got the same answer. If you tried it on your own, we have our uh, u v minus v du, cleaning that up a little bit. Uh, I took my four fifths, moved it out front, and four uh, times one fifth, uh, of course, gives us a co coefficient of four fifths. And again, integrating here, we're just integrating e to the u. And if u is 5x, then du is 5. So we need to integrate a 5 uh, for that chain to finish that chain rule. So introducing that multiplication of 5, uh, balancing that out with a division of 5, and we get 4 over 25 times the indefinite integral of 5 times e to the 5x dx. And now we can just say, well, the integral of, uh, again, with that chain rule of e to the u is just going to be e to the u. And now that I'm finished with that uh, indefinite integration process, we'll go ahead and Add in our constant uh, of our uh, our constant there at the end of the expression, and you know this is uh, you know I made this problem up and I and I checked it with my uh, CAS calculator, so you know this is perfectly fine version of an answer. And a lot of standardized tests and a lot of uh, your teacher may be very happy with your answer in this form. But if you're doing these kind of problems and you're checking your answers in the back of the book, uh, then you may very well see that your answer doesn't match what's back there. Well, that doesn't mean it's wrong necessarily, just might mean that they cleaned up things a bit more than you did. So find in a common denominator, multiply the numerator and denominator by five, and then <clears throat> with our common denominator of 25, uh, we have this as our numerator, and the numerator has a common factor of four and e to the five x. And we get a final cleaned up version you see here in the box. Now we are integrating, we are learning a new technique, and of course if you're working out of a textbook you can simply look in the back and see if uh, you get the same answer that they have, even though you might have a little bit of extra work to make your answer match, uh, but you can also check your answer with simply taking the derivative of your answer. So, I won't do this with all of the examples in this lesson, but the derivative with respect to x of, uh, and I just picked this line here before you know, find all the common denominators and stuff. Uh, the derivative with respect to x of 4 fifths x times e to the 5x minus 4 twenty fifths times uh, e to the 5x plus c. Well, the derivative of a constant, of course, is going to be zero. And we have the, we're taking the derivative of a product. So it's the first times the derivative of the second with the chain rule there, uh, plus the second factor times the derivative of the first minus, uh, well, we got 4 twenty fifths times e to the 5x, so of course, again, the derivative of e to the u is e to the u du, so that 5x derivative of 5x is equal to 5. A little bit of cleaning up, and we get right back to where we started from. So we have checked our answer. Let's get on to our next example. For our third example, we've got the indefinite integral of x times cosecant uh, squared of 3x dx, and you know, again, let's check to make sure we can't just do a simple u substitution. We have an inside function of 3x, if we let that be u, uh, then du is going to be 3, just simply 3 dx, but we do have that extra factor of x, so we're going to need to attempt to do this with integration by parts. So, laate, do we have a logarithm? 
No, we don't. Do we have an inverse trig function? We have a trig function, but it's not inverse, so no, we don't. Do we have an algebraic part? Why, yes, we do. And the uh, derivative of x is simply 1. So certainly that would fit the rule of, you know, allow you to be a factor where when you take the derivative of it, you get a simpler answer. And the rest of it needs to be the most, uh, you know, try and find the most complicated factor uh, of your integrand that will follow a basic integration rule. Well, the integral of cosecant squared x dx is going to be negative cotangent x, you know, plus c. So that does fit a basic integration rule. So we have, let's go ahead and let u equal x and du is equal to 1 dx. And then, of course, like it like before, once you set your factor or your, the part of your integrand that's equal to u, u, the rest needs to be dv. So dv is equal to the cosecant squared of 3x. Don't forget the dx that goes along with it when you, when you write your dv equation. And when you're following this rule, yes, we identified what dv is going to be, but we need a v to follow through the integration by parts rule. So we need to, again, integrate both sides of this equation. So the derivative uh, or the integral of dv is just simply going to be v. Now this does follow a basic integration rule, but again we have that inside function of 3x that I pointed out to before, so we need to set up that chain rule. And so we're going to have the indefinite integral of 3, because that's the, you know, if this is u then du is going to be 3 dx. So we have 3 times the cosecant squared of 3x dx. I introduced a multiplication of 3, so I need to balance that out, of course, with a division of 3, or multiplying by 1 third. And now we have v is equal to negative 1 third cotangent of 3x. And if we were just doing that little bit of a problem, we'd add the plus c there. Uh, but we're just going to save that until we're finishing. We're finished, of course, again, going through that integration by parts rule and then when we do that uh, indefinite integral and get a final answer, we'll add the constant, the plus c, at the end of that answer. So we have our u, we have our du, we have our v. Let's, you know, again, reveal this solution one step at a time, giving you an opportunity to pause the lesson and try it on your own, finish it on your own, if you like, before seeing the final answer. So let's see what we did here. We've got our u, v, and the u and the v, of course, going to give us negative x over 3, cotangent of 3x, minus v du. And of course, the du is just simply the x. I move the, ne the two negatives come out. I'm, bring I'm bringing the negative 1 third out. So negative times negative is positive. Uh, we have the 1 third. We have an inside function of 3x. And, the, and if that is our u, then du is going to be 3. And so we need to finish that chain rule by introducing the multiplication of 3 and canceling that with the division of 3. And that's where that coefficient of 1 ninth came from. And the integral of the cotangent of x dx is the natural, uh, natural log of the absolute value of the sine of x. So we have uh, plus 1 ninth, this coefficient here, again, of the natural log of the absolute value of 3x. And now that we're finished uh, going through this, in a, this indefinite integration process, of course, we bring in our, our constant of integration there. These last two lines, you know, simplify your problem to a point where it makes your teacher happy or that's required for some kind of test that you're taking. Uh, this is just in case you see this format in your book or if you are using like a CAS uh, system to check your answer. Uh, that may be what it looks like in that particular system, but that is the end of our third example. On to the fourth example. And here we have the indefinite integral of 4 times x times the natural log of 2x plus 1 dx. And we do have that product of an algebraic portion and a logarithmic portion here, so let's see how integration of parts is going to give us a helping hand. Layate! Do we have a logarithmic function? I just said that. Okay, so we're going to let u equal 
the factor, which is the logarithmic uh, portion of this integrand. And so we have u is equal to the natural log of 2x plus 1. And that means that dv is going to be equal to 4x dx. Okay, so if we integrate both sides of this equation, we have that uh, v is going to be equal to, well, that's just a simple monomial. So we're going to take that x. We're going to raise the power by 1. We're going to divide by that. And we're going to get v is equal to 2x squared. Excellent. Now, for this portion over here, u is equal to the natural log of 2x plus 1. Well, uh, remember the derivative of the natural log of u is u prime over uh, u. So we're going to have, if u is the natural log of 2x plus 1, then du is going to be equal to, well, the derivative of 2x plus 1 is simply going to be 2 over 2x plus 1. Excellent. Uh, dx. Okay. So now that we have all that written, we can go ahead and, <clears throat> let's see here. Well, go through the integration rule. We have uv, so we have u and v. So we're going to have 2x squared times the natural log of 2x plus 1 minus the indefinite integral of v, which is going to be 2x squared du, which is going to be 2 over 2x plus 1 dx. Now taking this one step further, just cleaning it up a little bit, we have 2x squared times the natural log of 2x plus 1 minus the indefinite integral. 2 times 2 is 4x squared over 2x plus 1 dx. Now, in the previous section, uh, or in an earlier section in your book, uh, hopefully you had, a, you had a, a section in your book that sort of summarized all the integration tips and techniques that you used to get through all these problems before learning uh, this integration by parts rule. And we're integrating a rational function here, or a fraction, and the degree of the numerator is greater than that than the degree of the denominator. So how are we going to finish this up? Uh, you know, if we let u equal 4x squared, we're going to have 6x, or excuse me, not 6x, 8x. The denominator is not equal to 8x, and vice versa. You know, if we let that be u, the derivative of 2x plus 1 is simply going to be 2, and that's not the numerator. Remember, hopefully remember that when you are trying to integrate a fraction where the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, you're going to uh, want to start uh, that integration process by actually doing a long division, rewriting this with uh, through the process of long division so that you can get it into a form that is going to allow you to integrate it uh, using, you know, your basic integration rules, hopefully. And if not, maybe we ultimately need to, you know, realize that we have to go through another step of integration by parts. But we've had many problems now where the degree of the numerator is greater than the denominator. So, as I step off and reveal the answer one step at a time, uh, and if you want to try to finish this on your own, you're going to want to start off by setting up a long division with this fraction before you continue on with the problem. And let's see what the rest of this looks like. So with our long division, we are able to rewrite 4x squared over 2x plus 1 as 2x minus 1 plus, and then of course, a remainder over what we're dividing by, 1 over 2x plus 1. Now, what we're going to do here is we have a polynomial that's quite simple to integrate, and, you know, 1 over 2x plus 1 isn't that bad either, but it is sort of two separate parts, so we're going to rewrite this with two separate integrals. Uh, but we're going to basically go from one big term into two. So because we're leading off with the minus sign, please don't forget to include parentheses, otherwise you'll have a sign error in your final answer. 
Thus we have these brackets. So we have the integral of 2x minus 1 dx plus the integral of 1 over 2x uh, plus 1 and the degree of our denominator is 1 and the degree of our numerator is equal to 0. The degree is 1 less uh, which implies that uh, we probably have a situation where the numerator is uh, can be rewritten as the derivative of the denominator. So if this is our u 2x plus 1 then du is equal to 2 and so we need to introduce a 2 in the numerator so we have a u prime over u and then pull that uh, or balance that multiplication of 2 with a 1 half out front. And now, uh, you know, the integral of 2x is just going to be x squared, because we raise that power by 1 and then divide, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. The integral of 1, negative 1, is negative x. And if we're integrating u prime over u, well then it's the natural log of u. Now we should always keep in mind that we can't take the natural log or the log of, you know, any base, of a negative number. So I went ahead and wrote the natural log of the absolute value of 2x plus 1 like we should. And I kept that, uh, that absolute value going on down here until eventually, you know, I'm looking back at the original problem and it's written without absolute values. So we're going to be assuming that whatever the domain of x is, that it's not going to be possible for 2x plus 1 to be negative. And I'm just simply matching the notation of my original problem. That's why I went ahead and dropped those absolute value symbols as I was writing my final answer. If this was not, you know, two, the natural log of 2x plus 1 already without uh, just a set of regular parentheses, then I would want you to, and I would have uh, kept the absolute value symbols in there. Of course, I am highlighting here that I'm, uh, you know, I'm just, again, this is a great answer. Just how far do you want to go? Check in your answers with a CAS calculator or computer algebra system, uh, back of the book, whatever. I'm making uh, each of these four terms have a common denominator of 2. And so 2 divided by 2 is 4. And then we have negative 2 and a positive 2. And when you look at this now, the first, and I, and I reordered the, the terms, my first two terms both have a common factor of the natural log of 2x plus 1. So when you pull it out, you get 4x and you get minus 1. Each of these terms both have a common factor of 2x. So factoring that out, we get our final answer of natural log of 2x plus 1 times, this, uh, times the quantity of uh, uh, 4x squared minus 1 minus 2x times x minus 1 over 2 plus c. That's the end of our four, fourth example. we got two more coming right up. Example number five. Let's take the indefinite integral of x squared times sine of 7x dx. Well, we should be able to do this already. This looks a lot like example number three. So pause the video, give it a shot. I'll step out, reveal the solution one step at a time, and uh, see where we lead. Is this exactly like number three, or is uh, this a little bit different? Okay, so yeah, this all started off looking like example number three. We had an, algebra, an algebraic portion uh, or factor to our integrand following the latte rule here or uh, acronym. That was, of course, uh, the third uh, letter in the acronym, algebraic portion. Uh, so we let that equal u, and the derivative of u or du is 2x dx. Uh, just dropping that power down, we let the rest of that integrand uh, equal dv. We integrated both sides. We uh, had the in indefinite integral of sine of 7x dx. We needed to let 7x be u. The derivative of that is 7x, so we need to finish that chain rule, introduce a multiplication of 7, balance it with the division of 7, or multiplication of 1 7 and the indefinite integral of sine is negative cosine. So we have v is equal to negative 1 7 cosine of 7x. And then setting up, or going through our rule for integrating by parts, we have our u, v giving us negative x squared over 7 cosine of 7x minus indefinite integral of negative 1 7 times cosine of 7x times 2x dx and the, the 2 and the negative 1 7 so they come together and I fact and I pulled it out front that constant out front giving us basically the same thing but a plus 2 7 in front of the indefinite integral symbol well, at this point, with all these other examples, I was ready to just continue the indefinite integration process and be done. But, I again, if I let u equal 7x, the derivative of u is equal to 7, and I have an, or 7x, and I have, uh, no, excuse me, 7dx. 
so I have that dx, I could easily introduce a multiplication of 7, but I have that extra x in there, that factor of x, which means that really, yeah, we went through the integration uh, identifying u and, and uh, dv in this and setting up the integration of parts uh, process, but we need to do it again, okay? So let's step off, uh, re-identify uh, what we're going to let u, which is just going to be the x, and dv be the cosine of 7x dx and go through this process again and see if we can't break this up even more with another step of integration by parts. Now, if I just continue this problem on, I'm definitely going to run out of room, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this portion of my work and slide this line up to line number 2 and go through the integration of parts process again, again, identifying what u and dv is going to be equal to and then reveal after that the rest of the solution. So pause the video if you want to work out the rest of this problem on your own. So as you can see, and hopefully you did as well, we set up a new u and dv, uh, u being x, uh, that given you du is simply dx, and with dv being the cosine of 7x dx, uh, we integrate both sides of that. We had to again finish that uh, chain rule process, so putting a 7 out here and a division of 7 to cancel that out, uh, and the integral of cosine is equal to sine, so we have v is equal to 1 7 sine of 7x dx. Now, as we start to apply the integration rule, uh, integration by parts rule again, uh, we're going to have that uv minus the indefinite integral of v du. Now, we've done this now, what, we're in the fifth example, why am I saying it again? Just to remind you one more time that you're taking uh, what is basically two-sevenths um, times a single term and you're breaking it up into two terms. Now, it's a positive two-sevenths, so if you, for some reason, uh, well, even if you did forget the brackets, you would then uh, not distribute the two-sevenths through both of those uh, terms. You know, it was two-sevenths times one term. Now applying the integration by parts, it's two-sevenths time two, uh, times two terms, and of course you need to distribute that to get the correct answer. So make sure you use parentheses or brackets every time uh, you do substitution. And let's see here, well, uh, when I distributed that through, we had 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 sevenths, but then I also pulled that 1 seventh out front, so that's where the denominator 49 came from. It's 7 times 7 is equal to 49, just like it was here in the first term, but just pulling that out in front of the integral uh, symbol, just wanted to point that out. Now again, you'll look over here, and we have negative 2 over 49 in front of our indefinite integral symbol, and now we have negative 2 over 3, uh, 43. Well, there's no coefficient of 7 here in front of the sign, and again, we need to complete that chain rule pattern, so I introduce a multiplication of 7 and a division of 7, or a multiplication of 1 seventh, and 49 times 7 is 343. So let's see, we just integrated uh, basically uh, sine, the integral of sine is negative cosine, so we have a sine change there, and this is a perfectly fine answer if it uh, were not to match what you got out of your, your CAS system or if it was a similar type problem in your textbook and you look in the back and it looks totally different. I'm just finding common denominators, multiplying this by 49 in the numerator and denominator, uh, multiplying this by 7, and <clears throat> because we have a couple of terms with the cosine of 7x, I also did a little reordering and wrote negative 49x squared cosine of 7x plus 2 cosine 7x plus 14x sine of 7x, and I factored a common, this common factor out of the first two terms of cosine of 7x, and we get here our final answer. So we are coming up to our last example, very exciting. Uh, so, uh, well, stop mumbling, let's get to it right now. It's the last Example number six, and let's find the indefinite integral of e to the 2x cosine of 3x dx. Do we have, uh, look at it, layate. last time in the video I'm going to say that. Do we have a logarithm? No. Do we have a inverse trig function? 
No, do we have an algebraic part? No, not really. I mean, there's some variables and stuff floating around, but uh, you know, we don't have like a 3x or something or x to the fourth. Do we have a trigonometric factor or part? Yes, we do, cosine of 3x. So we're gonna let u equal the cosine of 3x. And that means that dv is the remainder, and the dv again has to have that dx, even though it's there uh, with the cosine, it seems like. We're gonna let dv equal e to the 2x dx. Now that means that uh, if we take the derivative of uh, u, du is gonna be over here. Uh, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. But we have that inside uh, function of 3x. We're gonna multiply, multiply that by three, of course. We're going to integrate uh, both sides of this to figure out what v is going to be equal to. So v is going to be equal to the indefinite integral of e to the 2x dx. And we've been doing enough of these now. I'm just leaving some space to fill in the chain rule. The derivative of 2x is 2. So we need to finish that chain rule and have a one out front, one half out front to balance that out. And we get v is equal to one half e to the 2x. Because of course, again, the integral of e to the u is e to the u, or integral of e to the u du is e to the u. Okay, well, well, we've got everything we need. Let's see here, we have uv, so we have uv. Okay, so we have, let's see here, we have uh, one half. Uh, let's see, let's put the e first, I guess. e to the 2x, so there's, uh, well, it's uv, but I know that I'm going to kind of end up with that same sort of format as the original problem, so I'm, gonna put, I'm putting v first. So vu, so vu or uv minus the indefinite integral of v du. Okay, we have some constants here. This is going to be negative 3 halves. We're going to pull that out front. And negative times negative is positive. And that 3 over 2. Well, I'm kind of getting into, I went through the integration of pro, uh, parts process and I actually have something more complicated than it looks like when I started with, and I guess it kind of always happens with your uv and the plus uh, integral of v du. Um, hmm. Well, if we go through this integration by parts process again and we let the trig function be u again, the derivative of sine is uh, cosine. So, at, I don't think we're going to get a simpler expression, but uh, it seems like since the, you know, the way how we, we integrate uh, or, or take the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and it's there, and at least we're going to get back to cosine. Let's just go through the integration of parts process one more time and see if we lead to a point you know, that, I don't know, can make any sense out of this. Because right now it seems like we did a lot of work and didn't make a whole lot happen. Oh, and, and by the way, I forgot to mention on the previous example at the end of it, I'm doing these six examples. Uh, like I said, we're going to do a definite integration video again, uh, do another, another video that requires maybe a little bit of use substitution uh, incorporated with the integration by parts. We're also going to do another lesson that's specifically like the problem in the, the, the example number five. Uh, there's a particular type of uh, uh, pattern that you can have in your integrand that would give you a hint that the problem would be easier or much quicker to do uh, by something called the tabular method or the tic-tac-toe method if you ever watched uh, the movie Stand By Me. So uh, we'll have a, that was the exponent on the x was only x squared. We only had to go through two steps of the integration by parts. Uh, if that had been an x to the fourth or fifth it would have been a much longer tedious process and we'll talk about those in a later lesson. But for right now again getting back to this 
We did an integration by parts process. We got to a new line. Doesn't seem that much different than the previous one. Let's do it one more time and see what happens. This time, you give it a shot. So we have our new U. Uh, it's going to be sine of 3x. and That means that du is going to be 3 cosine of 3x dx, going through the chain rule. Uh, dv is going to be the same e to the 2x dx. So we have v is once again 1 half e to the 2x power. So, you know, going through our integration by parts process again, we have the same first term right here, uh, plus 3 over 2. So plus 3 over 2 again, but now this is going from 1 term to 2. So we're, of course, remembering to use those parentheses as we uh, set up or work through the integration by parts rule or, you know, take this out and substitute it with two terms. This is just, you know, not getting that much simpler. Except, I've just noticed something here, uh, that if I were to take this three halves out and move it in front of the indefinite integral symbol, move the constant out front if you will, well, then look at what I've got. In my work, I have the indefinite integral of e to the 2x cosine of 3x dx, and that was my original problem. Well, I didn't really do all this work to get right back to where I started from, and I didn't. It's that expression is within my work. Well, how are we going to finish this problem? Well, recognizing that this is equal to this whole, uh, you know, long expression here. I'm going to make an equation. This is equal to this. Great. I'm going to write them so that they're equal to each other. And, you know, basically think of way back in, you know, algebra where you were solving an equation where you had a variable on both sides of the equation. I'm going to move this, uh, you know, indefinite integral of e to the 2x cosine of 3x dx to the other side of the equation and, you know, do a little bit of work and I'll be able to isolate that and whatever's on the right hand side is going to be our final answer. We're kind of going in a circle here. But that also means that if I'm saying that I'm going to write these equal to each other, I need a big long equation and I do apologize. I try and always have my notes really neat and have them all up on the board by the end so you can follow the sequence of work. But I'm going to erase all of the scratch work uh, where I'm setting up u and dv uh, to go through the integration by Prutz process and kind of squeeze this up a little bit so I can have, you know, so I can write the rest of these notes uh, neatly so you can follow them. Here we go. Bam! So cleaning up all of our scratch work, setting up uh, those integration by parts. I've got uh, the first, the answer to the first uh, step of integration by parts here, and uh, then the end of our second step, and then that's when we identified, chalk down, that uh, we had e to the 2x cosine 3x dx showing up again. So I took our original problem, I set it equal to, uh, you know, that place in our work, and I moved this term. I added 9 over 4 times the definite integral e to the 2x cosine of 3x dx. I added that to both sides, and 1 plus 9 over 4 with common denominators is 13 over 4. And now, you know, all I have left to do is multiply both sides of the equation by <laughs> all I have left to do. I mean, look how much work we had to do, but, uh, and being very careful with my signs and not making any uh, silly little mistakes, we uh, multiply both sides by 4 over 13. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and when we go to the uh, second term on the right-hand side, the 4s are going to cancel out, giving us a coefficient of 3 over 13. And now we know that the indefinite integral of e to the 2x cosine of 3x dx is equal to 2 over 13 times e to the 2x times cosine of 3x plus 3 over 13 times e to the 2x sine of 3x plus c. I'm Mr. Teru. Bam! Got to your